You're saying that Jared Kushner did not solve the Middle East crisis? Jared Kushner did not bring peace to the Middle East. <laughs> I'm here with Politico's foreign affairs correspondent, Nahal Tusi, and we're going to be breaking down the latest Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Let's start with a little bit of the recent history of, um, of what's going on in the Middle East. Um, I know recent history in the Middle East can be like a couple of thousand years. Yeah, thank you. So there's a number of factors in this, uh, and it's kind of like a confluence of dates and events. And basically, it comes down to two big ones, though. One is just kind of uh, increasing frustration uh, among people who worship uh, in the old city at the various sites, such as the Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, and elsewhere, uh, about access to these sites. So there's been these clashes over the last few weeks um, uh, you know, regarding like how far people can go to worship, what the Israeli security forces are doing in terms of allowing access. It's been very frustrating for a lot of the Palestinian mu Muslims uh, who go there to pray. This is also the month of, of Ramadan. There were more than 300, I believe actually more than 500 uh, wounded Palestinians. Uh, Israeli security forces were using rubber bullets. Then Hamas launched rockets at Jerusalem. And then you add on top of that this other situation, which is uh, a number of Palestinian families who have lived in East Jerusalem for a long time uh, face potential eviction. There are is Israeli settlers who are trying to take over their homes in East Jerusalem uh, using laws that um, a lot of folks say are really biased against non-Jews. In terms of events, you have Jerusalem Day, which is uh, kind of when Israelis celebrate the what they call the reunification of Jerusalem back when they captured uh, East Jerusalem. So all of these things kind of came together and there have been protests and, and clashes, and then it just sort of exploded. This, of course, is the is the first Israeli Palestinian crisis, if we can use that word, on uh, Joe Biden's watch. Israel has a right to defend itself when you have thousands of rockets flying into your territory. But uh, I had a, a conversation for a while with, with the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, and uh, I think that uh, my hope is that we'll see uh, this coming to conclusion sooner than later. How has it been similar or different from the Trump administration? and also from the last uh, Democratic administration, if at all. What's really interesting about the Biden administration's approach is that unlike several previous administrations, including the Trump administration, they don't really have a plan or, or you know, an expectation of resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, they didn't even name a special envoy for it. So they just didn't think there was much to be gained from getting too involved in this conflict, which is decades old. Uh, at the same time, they have other priorities. COVID, the economy, uh, China. And so the administration kind of was trying to not really get its hands uh, involved with Israel-Palestine, but it's almost like every time you do that with this conflict, it comes back to get you. You just cannot get away from it. It will not ignore you. Nahal, in so many other spheres in domestic politics, progressives really have uh, the ear of, of this president and this White House. And they've done, um, from the progressive view, a, a pretty good job of keeping them happy. But do you see that pressure paying any dividends for, for, for the left uh, going forward? Do you see that domestic pressure uh, uh, changing things even more? The thing about progressives is that their strength has long been domestic issues, not foreign policy. There is a growing cohort of like progressives who are focused on foreign policy and are very vocal about issues like Israel-Palestine, but are they gonna be enough to move Biden a particular direction? Uh, I don't think necessarily. And can he afford to do what he wants without worrying about what they think on this issue? I think he can. By the end of the Obama administration, um, President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu had a famously bad relationship. Through the Trump years, um, Net Netanyahu was very close to Trump. And Trump, you know, he did a lot of things that were on the sort of wish list on the pro-Israel side in the United States. After um, all of that recent history, where does Biden himself and Jake Sullivan and Tony Blinken um, and the National Security Advisors, where do they fit in at this point on their views uh, on on Israel. They really still are very, very much 
devoted to the security of Israel, protecting Israel. While we urge de-escalation on all sides, we also recognize Israel's legitimate right to defend itself, to defend its people and its territory. Nobody is saying we're going to abandon our ally Israel. That's just not realistic on any number of levels. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, from what I can tell, think that they, they are very aware of the way that uh, Netanyahu treated Obama. And they are seeing uh, the changes in the Democratic Party when it comes to, uh, from when it comes to the Palestinians. And if you remember at the, at the end of the Obama administration, the United States abstained on a UN Security Council resolution condemning Israeli settlements instead of vetoing it. And that was yeah. a real signal of how like the politics were shifting. The politics uh, over there are really a mess right now. Israel had its fourth election in two years recently, but they haven't been able to form a new government. So there's, they're kind of politically a, a total mess. And the Palestinians were supposed to have their first election in 15 years later this year, but that was postponed indefinitely uh, because uh, they say that they don't think they can get enough uh, uh, access for uh, Palestinians in East Jerusalem and elsewhere to vote. In some ways, in so many ways, uh, Israeli pol politics has become increasingly right-wing, um, some, some would even argue radicalized. That, that's really interesting. So in essence, what you're saying is it's been deprioritized in American foreign policy right now. If, if you had to sort of describe the big foreign policy objectives and priorities of the Biden administration, you know, where would this fit on the list uh, these days? Um, honestly, I'm not even sure it would make the top 10. What I found interesting, I should add, about the Trump years was, you know, the thing about the Trump years with Jared Kushner and the others is they picked a side, right? That was their way of like saying, we're going to solve this by picking a side. It wasn't just Israel Palestine. It was Morocco and uh, the Western Sahara and, and other things. They just picked a side. And to them, that was their their way. But did that actually work? I, I no, I don't think so.